is the Wayne Ayers Podcast. The Wayne Ayers Podcast. Woohoo! Time to wake your ass up for a blessed day. Okay, hey. Happy. How are you? Pretty good. How are you doing? Good. That's nice, nice, nice. Um, Yeah. How, how has this been life? How has life been since you've been back? It's been good. I just got back to L.A. Um, We're starting up school and some practice here in the next couple of days. And so I've just been between here and Orange County, um, settling down a little bit, setting up my room. I just moved into a new place. So, yeah. Wait, wait. wait. So what, what school are you going to now? I know you graduated from USC. I graduated from USC, but I'm doing a fifth year for my master's degree. Nice. Um, I'm I did a progressive degree program, so it's a two year program that I started last year during my senior year, and so because of COVID, I have one more year of eligibility of swimming, and so here I am. <laughs> nice. So you're back at USC. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Let me yes. Turn off my notifications. Nice. 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 Yeah, I'm back at USC. So what is like how is that like so you just went from Olympics, now you're back to like practice. How's that been? Like how everybody been around you and everything? I mean, everyone's been the same. It wasn't my first Olympics. Yeah. I went to Tokyo and um that was a crazy transition because I was uh staying in Orange County to train for the Olympics that year. And then I went straight from the Olympics to school and that was a whole new environment for me. But now I feel like I've gotten in the groove of college. Like I know USC well, I know my teammates well. It's not like I'm entering a whole new environment like I was after Tokyo. And so this transition has been a lot easier for sure. And I mean, I have my friends, everyone knows me, so. That's nice. Okay, I want to start from like the beginning. I want to know, like, do you remember the first time you started swimming? Oh, that's a long time ago. I do. I do remember it because I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, My mom thinks it's so funny and ironic because I hated the water when I was super young. Like my grandma and my mom always tell me like they couldn't even get me to get in the bathtub because I just hated the water. Uh, I would scream like bloody murder when they tried to give me a bath or anything. And then we moved out to California and my dad was teaching swim lessons and he got tired of trying to keep an eye on me. And so there was a swim team going on right where he was teaching lessons. So he was like, oh, I'll just throw her in there, you know, to keep me busy. And they threw me in and I hated it. And I remember the first day at practice, I tried to tell them that I had a stomach ache and that I wanted to like get out and they're like, it's fine. Like we only have 30 minutes left. Like you're fine. And they just kind of like made me sit through the entire thing. <laughs> um, and then I guess from there, I just kept doing it. And eventually I made it to where I am now. <laughs> I don't know what happened in between. I I was joking because we had a speaker at the Olympics come to us and he was like, you know, they always say, love what you're doing or do what you love. And I always think like I definitely learned how to love what I'm doing because I did not love swimming to begin with. So what when do you think like was a moment like when it first hit for you? Like, okay, I love this sport. Like was it a teenager or like was it like a certain competitive meet or yeah, I think it was gradual. Um, because obviously you build your friendships through the sport. You do stuff with those people all the time. So then you have your people in the sport. And then you find out at some point that like, hey, I'm pretty good at this. And then you really want to do better. And, you know, the then comes um, self-motivation and commitment, right? So I remember my parents wanted me to try other sports to like try out other things. Oh, wait, am I cutting out on your end? Uh, hey. Okay. Um, Sorry, it was a little laggy on my end. But they wanted me to try out other things. And I just remember being like, no, because I didn't want to fall behind, you know? Yeah. And so, so I think it was just a gradual thing. And there's just like small wins. Like I thought I was always really fast when I was younger. And then my parents, I talked to them and they're like, Annika, you were so slow when you were younger. Like you just took off one year and like did really well. But I don't know. So when did you realize you were good at swimming? I know you won a state championship. You've been to Olympics. You competed at USC. Like, when did you realize, like, oh, I'm actually good at this? 
Mm, I think I started taking it seriously around the age of 13 um, because that's when I had to start representing Ecuador. And I kind of had the choice, like, if I wanted to swim for the U.S. and try to make some U.S. teams because I was already going to, like, um, state select camps and stuff, or if I wanted to start representing Ecuador. And I had to obviously weigh the pros and cons of both, and I decided to go for Ecuador. And then I started competing at international meets, and I think that's when I – like I said, I started taking it more serious. And I think that's when I started realizing, hey, like, I'm pretty decent at this. Like I was winning a lot of meets, I was competing nearly every weekend. And um, I mean, obviously, sports have their up and ups and downs, but uh, I was steadily improving. And so nice. How was it like growing up in like in a swim, like tradition house? I know your father was an Olympian too in swimming. So how was that? It was good. You know, I think so many kids grow up in swim households and their parents are just really hard on them. And that goes for any sport. Like their parents are just so hard of the, on them growing up and want them to do all this crazy stuff in the sport. Or I want them to be going to practice all the time and like only focusing on swimming. And I think that draws a lot of kids away from the sport. And luckily, my parents were never like that. Like, yeah, my dad was a swimmer, but he always gave me space. He was very hands off growing up in the swimming space and like we didn't talk about it too much at home and like you know I cared for his advice every once in a while but like besides that like he never coached me in until seven weeks leading up to the Olympics in Tokyo and because he always knew that I kind of wanted space on that and so he he was very easy going on me and my mom knows nothing about swimming and so that was easy <laughs> how was like that like period during like the Tokyo Olympics when he was coaching you like was it like oh my dad's like actually coaching me now and uh, like how was that moment yeah that's a crazy story because um I was training with uh, another coach prior to that and I wasn't going the times that I knew I could be going and so my dad was like hey just train with me for a little bit and so I was like I don't really want to be training with my dad one-on-one -on -one. But I was like, it's only seven weeks. Like, I can do anything for seven weeks. That's fine. And so then I was training with him. And then we were like two weeks out from going to South American Championships, which is where I was looking to qualify for Tokyo Olympics. And then COVID hit. And so I was like, shoot, like, I guess I'll just have to keep training for a little bit longer. And what was supposed to be seven weeks turned into two years of training one on one with him. And that was hard because obviously all the focus was on me. So it's not like I could like goof off or go a little bit easier one day. Like I needed to be performing all of the time, which was extremely mentally draining. Um, and I didn't have my friends around me, which made it hard. Like they always say swimming is an individual sport, but it's very much like also a very social sport. Like it's your friends that want you, that make you want to show up in the morning, you know? And so it was challenging, but I trained and competed the best I have ever competed in my life. That's nice. That's nice. How was it part of being part of the uh, Gator Swim Club as well? Gator Swim Club was amazing. So now it's called Evolution Swim Racing Club. Nice. Um, it's their new name. And I mean, I love training with them. It was at the time, it was a little bit of a smaller club compared to some of the other clubs around us. Um, but I mean, it wasn't clicky at all there was never like drama like it was almost like a big family I loved I loved swimming with them it was amazing that's nice that's nice well uh, I know you spoke on this uh or like talk about Ecuador and USA but what made you kind of go with Ecuador more than USA mm, I mean my family comes from there my dad trained uh and competed for Ecuador when he was a bit younger um and so I had already visited a lot, like I had um, a lot of roots from there and comparing the swimming and stuff, I knew there was a lot more room for opportunity. I mean, if you decide to go to prof go professional, a lot of the smaller countries are offering to pay you more depending on how you perform, you know, um, it's less competitive and they would probably give me more opportunity to travel and attend those meets. Whereas if like I were to swim for the U S I'd probably make a meet or two and then never swim for them again. 
So it would make it a lot harder to go professional, you know, unless you're like a Michael Phelps or something like that. Um, you can't really make a career as much out of Olympic sports because they're different from professional sports, which makes it a lot harder. No, I always respect the athlete that like go back and like just oh I'm I'm gonna represent my like, country that my parents came from or something. Cause like me personally, my mom's from Trinidad. If I was like the best athlete in the world, I would probably go represent Trinidad. So right. I think, yeah, yeah, I think that's cool. Like okay? U.S. gets a lot of medals; they're gonna do their thing. But it'd be cool to like oh I brought home a gold medal for my country, uh, my whole family's country. You know what I'm saying? Of course. And then like once you're at those meets too, like it's really interesting dynamic because a lot of those smaller countries all join together. And so, you know, like you have each other's backs and you get to know each other. Like I know a swimmer from Trinidad, like if I were competing for one of those bigger countries, they tend to just stick to themselves and not really like go socialize as much. And so I would have probably never knew known as many people as I do now and made the friends that I have. No, that's nice. That's nice. I like that. Yeah. Um, let's dive into Paris Olympics. How was that like total experience? Cause I know some athletes are having like they were saying they had a good experience and like some bad experience. How was your Paris experience total? My Paris experience was amazing. I had some major drama when I first arrived with my federation. They um the Olympic Ecuadorian Olympic Committee was being difficult because they weren't letting me into the village. Um, and they weren't giving me a, my accreditation, which is wild because they booked my flights to get there early and then they didn't let me into the village. I had no place to train. If my family weren't there, I would have had no place to stay. I had no way to travel anywhere. So that was on Ecuador's end, really crazy of them. But eventually I got into the village. And after that, that was an amazing experience. Um, the how people, does that, how does that even happen? Cause like you pay for their flights. So like, how does that? Oh, they literally booked my flights and that doesn't make any sense. How that... I, I don't know. They told us once we landed in Paris, they told us, Hey, by the way, we're not going to give you your accreditation until five days prior to your race. I'm going to turn off my AC really quick. Oh, that's wild. Um, they were like, yeah, we're not going to give you your accreditation until five days before your race. And I was like, no other countries are doing that. I are, I know like tons of other swimmers that are already in the village. Um, I don't know why, like, I don't know if this is just a rule for Ecuador or something. And we tried to reach out to them and say like, hey, you have an Olympian basically on the streets. What are you going to do about it? And they left us on red. <laughs> I was like, you're kidding me. Um, so I don't know why they wouldn't let me in. I don't know if they were reserving those beds for like other people. Cause there were only so many athletes there at the time. Like I know they had enough beds for all the athletes. So I don't know if they were bringing in people or what, like, I don't know what the problem was or why they were being so strict about it. They never let me know. Um, but yeah. No, that's wild. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense because, like, if you're buying, if you're paying for their flights and everything, you think that part would be already care taken care of. Well, yeah, like they literally booked the flight for me to arrive at that time. Like they knew I was coming in, so it's super odd. Um, but yeah, once I was in the village, everything was smooth. Moving was easy. The people volunteering were so nice. The village was gorgeous. There were so many things for us to do. I honestly think I had more fun there than I did at the Tokyo Olympic Village, um, just because there was so much more to do outside. Like you couldn't really socialize as much. There were no areas for socializing in Tokyo because obviously they didn't want to spread COVID. But yeah, it was cool. That's nice. That's nice. Did you meet like anybody like from a different sport that you're like a fan of? I'm not a huge fan girl of anyone, but I did see Noah Lyles, and I ran into him. And he had a mask on and I was like, you, like, I would just remember walking and I just recognized his eyes. I was like, you, I want a photo with you. <laughs> and I, then I asked him, I literally asked him, he took his mask off to take a photo. And I was like, you have a mask on, like, are you sick? And he's like, no, 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 not sick. And then like four days later, it came out that he had COVID. And so, I mean, at least he won a gold medal. But <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They might have took him out if he admitted that he had COVID if he didn't. I heard that they weren't taking athletes out um, 
at least that had COVID, I heard that they still, all of them still were able to compete. Oh, oh that's good then. Which I was worried about because I remember in Tokyo, like if you had COVID, like you were done for, you cannot compete. That would suck. Like you get all the way there and then you get COVID and it's like. I mean, it happened in Tokyo and that was like my biggest fear because they had you there for two weeks. So, but yeah. That's, that's, yeah, somebody had to at least get that. Um, how did you prepare for like the Olympics knowing you're just graduating from USC? Um, how did like I... a short gap from those, like from the two, probably like two yeah. to one. I mean, I was training regardless at USC. Like I'm always training. It just is a matter of where I'm training. So like I was training at USC throughout the entire, for the past three years. Um, but then in the summers I go to train professionally with my dad who coaches me at home and then I'll train for a world championship or for the Olympics or something like that. And then when I'm at USC, I'm training for uh, the school season and the collegiate season uh, that's like NCAAs and stuff. And so um, I did have like two or three months to prepare for the Tokyo Olympics, which was hard because- I'm talking about Paris. I mean, for the Paris Olympics. Yeah, oh. yeah. I only had two or three months to prepare for the Paris Olympics, which was hard because I do so much like yardage and stuff at USC. The training is just different um, than what I do when I train professionally on my own. And so I needed to get my sprinting back. Like I needed to get my fast twitch back. Um, and I only had a short period of time to do that. But that's basically all we did for those two or three months, just like fast twitch sprints. It's similar to track. If you see how sprint people train for track, they're not doing the same thing that like uh, people that run, I don't know. 400 or like 800 you, meters. Or the 800 wow. are doing. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's the same thing for swimming. So I was just doing a lot of fast switch stuff, working in the technical things. Nice, nice. Um, how what was like your race strategy for the uh, fifty meter? The for the fifty meters, there's almost like no strategy. It's just go. Uh, of course, you have to make sure all the technicalities are like in check because you need you can't have a slow start. You can't have slow underwaters. Um, and you need to be really high on the water because you need every like millisecond you can get since it's such a fast race. Um, so I don't know if I really had much of a strategy. I just wanted to make sure everything was like as perfect as it could be. Nice, nice. I know like in track and field, kind of like in high school, not like no Olympic level or nothing like that, but I did <laughs> high school and like, I know like I did the 400 meter and like certain points, like my coach would be like, hey, you got to do this here and there. After, like, the results of the Olympics, was there, like, something that you saw in yourself, like, man, I wish I would have done this here or there? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't my best time. It definitely could have been a better swim. But, like, my start was good and my underwaters were decent. I lifted my head on the breakout, which is something that I know I should have been working on more, I think, in the water. I don't know what I could have necessarily done done better I haven't analyzed it too much because it's one of those things where you build up so long for it and then it happens and then it was almost just like I don't there's no point in like looking back so hard on it like because I don't want to beat myself down for it so I haven't really analyzed like if I could have done something better um yeah I don't know it's it wasn't my best swim but it was my second best swim ever so I'll take so you were satisfied with the results that's good I was satisfied, yeah. No, that's good. That's good. Uh, what was like your biggest takeaway from the Paris Olympics? Hmm. I mean, I think a big takeaway for me was to be content with my results when I know that I've put in everything that I could put in. Um, because it would have been easy for me to finish and be like, oh, I could have done this better. I could have done this better. I should have done this because I really wanted to make top 16. And I know that I could have, but I think it's important to be content with how I did because I know that I put in everything. And I think that's something that applies to like, not just swimming at the Olympics. Like it applies to everything. Like as long as you know, you put in everything and you prepared properly, then that's all you can do. That's nice, nice, nice. Okay, I respect it. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you plan on um, participating in the 2028 Olympics? Because it's in LA, USC. I know. <laughs> a lot of people keep asking me that. I feel um, like you have to. It's like, 
You're like the what like the California State, you won a champ high school state championship, USC competed for I the know. How how could you not? Even after I swam, people were coming up to me and they were like, So are you gonna be in LA 28? And I just kept telling them, I was like, 2028 seems really far away right now. Like I literally <laughs> just finished. <laughs> It's like it's like it would be like like the hometown hero rep like come on that's like I mean we'll see I it's not a no for sure I do want to just take a little bit of a break um I've been pushing my body for like the past four years without any break and um I do like have some injuries and I just want to heal for a little while and then I'd love to explore like my hobbies and like see what else makes. Annika, Annika, you know, and do that, maybe start my career, get some experience. And then if I'm like, ah, oh, you know, I'm really missing swimming. Cause I also heard there's a rumor that they're going to be introducing fifties of stroke, which means like the 50 fly would be there. And that's something that I feel like I'm really good at. And so maybe in 2026, if I'm like, oh, like let's circle back, I would start training for it for sure. Okay, I hope you do do it because it's like it's like a perfect setup for you. It is. I know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I'm I to, I, oh, my bad. Go ahead. I was just gonna say. I just have to feel it out. We'll see. No, yeah, I think that's just like a perfect like. Hey, and it seems like it, right? Yeah, it's the California State Championship, USC, Olympian. It's just right there for Olympic twin in LA. I mean, if it was in another different city, I'd be like, all right, but it's in the <laughs> I know. I, you don't I have know. to call, you don't have to travel nowhere. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's true. It's just so convenient. But the training for it is not convenient. <laughs> I, 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 I can't even be like, oh, okay, no, <laughs> I, I get it. I know. <laughs> be like, I'm just going off of everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, um, I forgot to uh, ask you this. Um, how was like breaking the national record? I believe what was it, the two hundred meter? Um, the two hundred meter freestyle and uh for uh, LA Invite last year, I think. How was like breaking the national record? That's like that's crazy. I mean, it was good. I think I I wasn't sure if I broke my own national record, but I hate the two hundred freestyle it's that's considered a distance event for me and so um I remember making a deal with my dad and he was like if you just break the 200 or the 200 freestyle national record I won't make you do finals because usually you swim it twice so he was like I won't make you swim it a second time and that'll be like the last time you ever swim 200 free because I was planning on basically retiring after the school year and I don't swim it for the collegiate season and so I was like, okay, like I'll break it. And then I'm never swimming it again. That was my last, my last 200 free. That is <laughs> crazy. Uh, <laughs> I so break it, a record that you don't care about. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, to be honest, like, I'm sure there's a lot of people that could go way faster than a 202, which I think is what I went in it. Like, I think a lot of people could beat that if they wanted to. It wasn't a crazy fast national record. Um, but, I mean, it's still a record, so I'll take a it. Record. I feel like there's people training to do that at some point, and then they still, you still had the best time of all time for it. Yeah, I just remember being like, I just want to get this over with. <laughs> no, that's crazy. Um, before, we want to get to, like, some fun and personal questions. Like, so what do you enjoy um, doing in your free time outside of swimming? Mm, I want to know the questions that people ask. Is this one of them? Yeah, these these are like the people ask. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I was I was curious about that. Um, outside of swimming, what do I like to do? I like I like eating good food. I'm a foodie. I really can appreciate some good food. I like trying new places, but I also like sticking to what I know. Um, I like hanging out with my friends um obviously going to the beach is a big one um learning how to bake new things I feel like I have like a whole list I like shopping um I like going to the movies I don't know I like doing everything that everyone else likes to do <laughs> so what are like some of your favorite food 
Don't yeah, ask like food questions. spots in LA that you like. <laughs> uh I there are some food spots that I like. Um I like Bell's Beach House a lot in Venice Beach. That one is just so cozy. It's great for a cocktail or something. Um I like I just got hooked on main chick, which is basically like raising canes and Chick-fil-A combined. Oh, that's no. how that's how I picture it. It's like think Dave's hot, but not. Okay. No, no, hot, I like all three of those places. So I'm gonna have to check that one out. <laughs> Try it. It's called Main Chick. You, you... Yeah, I like Raising Canes, Chick-fil-A, and Dave's Hot. So I you, recently been put group, on it. And I to check it like out. It. Yes. <laughs> um I don't know. I'd have to, you'd have to give me like a second. I love Thai food, local Thai food. Oh yeah, I love going to a Thai market on a weekend. I've never been. I heard it's really good. It's way better than just getting Thai food. Like you just gotta go to Thai Thai market. I've heard it's Before really too. amazing. I yeah. need to get over there. Yeah, the Thai market on the weekends. Is, yeah, I was just there like what two weeks ago. It was it was amazing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I need to check it out. Yeah, that's that's the best place to get Thai food. Another thing I love to do is coffee shops. I love going to coffee shops. I love studying at coffee shops. I'm not even a coffee drinker, but like a good matcha or a good chai and like bringing a book or something. That's one of my favorite things. Nice. Have you been to Porto's before? Oh, I love Porto's. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I grew up going to Porto's. <laughs> oh, Porto's. I, I literally had it like four days ago. The potato oh. balls. <laughs> yeah, I just got hooked on Portos this year. I was like, yeah, I've been in LA for like 10 years and nobody's told me about Portos. Uh, it's like, so good. Yeah, that's, that's they're right. always packed. Yeah, no, but you go by fat. It's worth it though. I love yeah. some good Cuban food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one Portos is like my new spot now. Uh, uh -huh. who is your favorite athlete in any sport? Hmm. I told you I'm not really one to fan girl. So I there's never been really someone that I'm like, I look up to them, like I praise them, I want to train like them, I want to be like them. Um, but I will say after watching Sprint on Netflix, the documentary, those girls, especially like the Jamaicans, I don't know, I'm sorry, I don't know a lot of their names, but they are just so cool. Like the way that they train, how focused they are. There's one lady that's a mother and Kelly and Fraser. Huh? Kelly and Fraser? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Her. And she's just like, their focus is on another level, as as well as their confidence, which I really admire. Because in swimming, you don't see that. Swimming's a very nice sport. It's a very soft sport. There's not so much like tension between countries or anything like there's not really much drama whereas I feel like track has so many more personalities and I mean even in the way that they are able to express themselves they have the nails the glam the hair the wigs like all of that um whereas with swimming you can't really do that because we're we look like wet dogs all the time <laughs> so um to answer your question, I would say just those track girls that are the elite of the elite. That's nice. That's nice. Oh, uh, next question is, what is your dream vacation? Mm, I really want to go to Thailand. I've had my eye on Thailand for a while. It looks beautiful. I'd also, along that, would love to go to the Philippines. My best friend is from there, and she has a place there, and I've been wanting to go for a while. So, and I haven't traveled to Asia as much as I would have liked to. So I think somewhere over there, um, coast of Croatia is also on my bucket list. And my favorite place that I've traveled is Fiji. Uh, and I just love the people, the food. I would totally go back there. Nice, nice. Those are all beautiful places. Uh, okay, they, they, this is the next one. Who is your four favorite musicians? Who are my four favorite musicians? Oh, I'm such an indecisive person. Like you asked me my favorite food, my favorite musicians. Like I love whatever I'm in the mood for. Like I can't even give you a color. That's my favorite. So it depends on my mood. But um, <clears throat> right now, I guess over the years, I listen collectively to a lot of Kanye. Okay. I liked more old Kanye though. Me too. But I do. Everybody, I think everybody else agrees with you. But I do like the Vultures um, playlist that came out, the Vultures track. 
I also listen to, this is totally far from Kanye, but it's Hozier. I like his music. It's very calming to me. I've slowly, there's a few songs from Billie Eilish that I like, um, but I don't like all of her songs. I'm very picky about the ones that I do like. And <laughs> one more. Hmm. I like Peggy Goo Radio. I feel like all four of those artists are like all over the place. But that's kind of like. But you're showing your range. Depending on my mood, you're I'll listen to one of those. Artists. I respect it. <laughs> okay, the next one is like, what's the last movie do you watch that you actually really loved? Hmm. That's actually a good question. I can't even think of it. I really liked A Star Is Born. That one, I don't get emotional during movies, and that one at the end actually made me cry. Like I also am the type of person that will not rewatch a movie after I've watched it once, and that one I will watch it as many times as you want me to, which is how I know I loved it. <laughs> no, no, that was actually yeah, A Star Is Born. That's good. I'm trying to. I'm trying to think if there's a one before that. That's a good move. That's a good choice. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good one. Uh, do you have any hidden talents though? we should know about I think I would have been really good at track if I could have done track because I can jump really high I have a very high vertical jump um like I have ever, and maybe have you ever done like box jump and stuff I've always been really good at jump doing box jumps um I'm double jointed in my pinky I can do I can bring it around like this <laughs> oh <laughs> you're like that's not what i was talking about <laughs> I mean, I, that was a fan question so I, uh, that works though. i don't know that's <laughs> i mean besides that i don't have any any special challenge <laughs> unfortunately not no <laughs> i wish i have like a party trick or something i could tell you about i i can't do that i can't make burn noises <laughs> <laughs> That works though. I haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> like, whatever you did with your finger was cool, but oh, <laughs> uh, what is your funniest memory from your swimming career? Funniest memory from my swimming career. So I don't know. I've been doing this for like over 14, 15 years. Um this one's not really funny, but my it was definitely a memory my dad threw me a football during practice when we were when I was training with my team and I tried to catch it like this because I don't know how to catch a football and it hit my pinky and they were like it's just jammed and they yanked on it and stuff and I felt the bone was literally like cracked in half and so I fractured my pinky and I was out for like four months damn not really funny but <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you of a funny memory off the top of my head, to be honest with you. Uh, okay. <laughs> You're like, where is this interview going? <laughs> You're just like uh, off the top of my head. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I, I'll i tell you. I mean, kind of funny. It was funny afterwards. I was in a relay for high school, and I'm just the, so the type of person to go with the flow. Like I show up to the block, I do what I need to do and I'm out. And I showed up and I didn't know which type of relay we were doing. It was a four by hundred relay. And I thought it was like a 200 relay, which is when every person does a 50. And so she flipped to keep going. And I thought it was my turn to go. And I jumped on top of her, the Ooh. girl that was coming in for me. And we like kind of stopped in the middle of the pool and looked at each other and we were like, what do we do now? Like, is that a disqualification? Is it not? And then I just kept swimming and like we just played it off and we got disqualified. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. yeah, all right, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? I'd like to read people's minds. Ooh, I don't know about that one. <laughs> I know. I feel like that could be good, but it could also be bad. But I just would be curious, like what people are thinking. No, that yeah, that. And then you could like re respond accordingly, like you know when people are lying and stuff. Or I mean, another cool one would be to be invisible, of course. But no, that's a good one too. Invisible. Yeah. I think I'll do um, instant transmission, so I can go one place to another. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, and I was like, what is that? No, Don't yeah, they... you just like, I want to go to Tokyo, just get to Tokyo, or, you know what I'm saying? Take no flights. That would be super cool. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. <laughs> it saves a lot of time, that's for sure. Yeah, you could literally go to, and you don't even need a passport anymore. Like, who's going to tell you anything? Like, you just so true. Like, how do they know? <laughs> yeah, I'm at Rob a Bank. Just to that was good. <laughs> <laughs> You're in and out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, uh, what is your life motto? That's the next one. <laughs> I think my life motto has always just been to not take anything too seriously. Um, things come and go, events come and go, um, situations, stress, all of it comes and goes. And like, I think it's all about perspective and how you deal with things in life uh, and how you see them. And it, that can make your life or destroy your life you know and so I just try to not take anything too seriously go with the flow yeah good okay the next one is if you're if the world was ending tomorrow what would you do in the next 24 hours mm. I'd go spend all of my money I'd go eat a ton of food <laughs> um and then I'd go by the beach and watch sunset and wait for the world to end <laughs> that's nice that's nice I, I, I respect that I'll definitely be robbing. I'm not spending no money anywhere. I'm still in. I'm going to be the biggest You're... criminal. I'm going to be the biggest criminal. Yeah. In hours. You're the people that, like, you're one of the people that everyone would want to stay away from. Brandon, <laughs> you'd be one of the crazies. I'm jacking somebody's Lamborghini and crashing it for no reason. You know what I'm just saying? There's no reason at all. Just I'm going to be a criminal for it. That's like, so funny. We're, like, opposites. I want to just go, like, buy a dog and use all my money to buy a dog, and then I'll go watch Sunset with my dog. Oh, that's like you can do that. You know what I'm saying? Like that's I just want to do some criminal stuff. But all right, cool. At least I know I'm not going to jail for this. I'm gonna just come on one time I'm gonna try to do this. It seems oh. like you have a lot of like in inner criminal things that you're really trying to conceal. Yeah. <laughs> your superpower would be like to be able to steal a bank in and out quick. Villains like... are fun. Villains are fun. There's a reason why superhero movies go. <laughs> I know. That's I see your entire background. You have all the villains. <laughs> i see you want to be a villain yeah just just for just if i couldn't get in trouble i'll do that oh <laughs> uh, and then last one is what message would you like to send to your fans and supporters mm, i would just want to give a big fat thank you because i've received so many amazing sweet messages and i can't reply to them all um especially like during the olympics like I've just gotten nothing but so much love. Of course, every here and there, there's someone that has something to say that's a little hateful, but I've never really had the problem of dealing with hate or anything, which I'm very grateful for. Um, and I just love that they're willing to tune in on my life and be a part of it. That just means a lot to me because I'm not also like a crazy influencer type person that's always like guys like how are you doing like come along with the day for a day of my life like I don't do that stuff really it's really just me posting what I want to post um and the fact that they respect that and they still give me a lot of support for it I just appreciate that's nice well thank you so much for coming on the podcast I appreciate your time and I really hope you do the 2020 Olympics so, like <laughs> thank you i know i i told you like if i if i do do it you'll be the first one to know <laughs> all right cool. thank you so much i appreciate it yes thank you i'll talk to you soon <laughs>